Hi everyone, welcome to The Witching Week. Today is episode number 66. Today I'm going to be talking about astrology, I'm going to be talking about our heritage and DNA, and I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I've been watching recently that I think you'll really love. So grab a cup of tea, put your incense on, and let's jump into The Witching Week. Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, my name's Ren. I'm known as the Cemetery Witch. And every Friday we have a little get together. We have a cup of tea and we just chill out and we discuss the events of the previous week and the ones coming up and just talk about witchy and pagan subjects. So today I am drinking Focus by Twinings which is really nice. I can't remember what was in this. I think this is like a grapefruity, fruit tea. Um, yeah, I can't quite remember. I was drinking this one all last year and now I've completely forgotten what's in it. And I am burning some angel style incense by Zam Zam. So this actually smells like the perfume angel. I was given these incense sticks by a friend um, probably the year before last and I started burning them and I was like, that smells really familiar. And I didn't put two and two together for ages, even though I wear the Perfume Angels. So yeah, they're really nice because they're really, really big. Um, I should have some other for, for sort of comparison, shouldn't I? I guess regular incense sticks are sort of like this long. They come up to here, but these have just got like a little bit extra on. So I really, really like those. I haven't actually tried any of the others in the Zam Zam range, but they seem like they're really good quality. So yeah, absolutely love those. Huge apology to make to you. I'm really, really sorry I wasn't here last week. I have to be honest, I was really, really poorly. I got to Friday and um, I did have some work to do when I got that done and I had time to film, but I was so poorly, I went to bed and anybody that knows me, knows that I will not go to bed unless I'm like literally on death's door. So the next morning I woke up and there were a few things that were very, very wrong. So we had to call 111. They said, you need to be seen by a doctor within two hours and we're giving you an appointment in 10 minutes just around the road. We've got like a walking center, which is really helpful. Sometimes we get sent there. And the doctor looked at me and was really, really concerned. Um, and so she sent me to A&E. So long story short, A&E and the cardiology department at the same hospital don't really talk to each other. So I had the choice of being admitted. I was doing a bit better by the afternoon. The issues I've got, I think are cardiac related, but my heart was doing okay that particular day. So they gave me an ECG and they're like, we well, were absolutely fine. And I said, yeah, I'm having, I'm having a fine day in terms of my heart, but I think I've got this other problem and I've got all these symptoms anyway. Long story short, they said, we can either refer you to our cardiologist here, you'll be here for more time um, and basically it will complicate things or you can hang on to see your own cardiologist as you'll be seeing her fairly soon. So we did that in the end. Um, and I just want to say thanks for your messages of support when I, I said I wasn't going to be doing the Witching Week last week. I really, really appreciate it. Hopefully there will be a positive end to this fairly soon. And then I will know for sure what's going on and then I'll, I'll tell you guys. But thank you so much. And how has your week been? I'd love to hear all of what you've been up to. This Witching Week covers the 16th of Feb until the 23rd of Feb. I cannot believe that we are, well, yeah, we're nearly through February. We're, we're over halfway. It's um, just absolutely bonkers. Time is absolutely flying past this year. I guess I am being kept sort of fairly busy, but it's really, really rushing away. And soon enough, we'll be sat here and we'll be talking about Samhain and Yule again. So uh, I hope not. I hope not. We've got the we've got the warm, light growing season to come. And I fully intend to make every moment, uh, you know, make the most of every moment of that. But it is it's flying already. We've done nearly two months of the year already. So we have the first quarter moon in Taurus today. So you might you might encounter a little bit of stubborn energy there. And on the 14th of February, Valentine's Day, so Wednesday just gone, 
we had a Mars Pluto conjunction. So interesting astrological energy at the moment, maybe a little bit explosive, a lot going on. And then we've got the full moon in Virgo coming up. That's on the 24th of February. For us here in England, that happens at about half past 12 in the afternoon. Um, if you're in America, then it's early in the morning. Obviously, depending on where you are, there are time differences. And then in Sydney, it happens at about half past 11 in the evening on the 24th. Also my sister's birthday. So yeah, that's going to be an interesting full moon because you have this like organised, meticulous energy of Virgo, the most helpful sign in the zodiac, the sun sign of my very, very best friend, who is indeed really just wonderful, just so pragmatic, organised, helpful, loving, kind. She watches this, so hello Tara. Um, yeah, we have that opposing some slightly heavier energy coming from Saturn. So there's very much this like push me, pull me energy that's going to be going on when we get towards the end of February the 24th. So that's actually going to feel, uh, feel, it's going to fall in the period of the next Witching Week episode when I do that one, but just want to give you the information as it's coming up. So of course, when we talk about astrology, the effects of all these things will have an individual, you know, it's very personal, isn't it? It depends what you've got going on in your birth chart as well. So I'd love to hear how you lot do with full moons. What do you guys think about full moons? Does it affect you in any way? Um, I find them to be very, very intense. I definitely find it a lot harder to sleep during a full moon. I quite often will have a restless, very restless night. Um, if Yeah, in the sort of like day leading, day or two leading up to the full moon and certainly on the full moon. Um, and yeah, I've noticed my husband gets a little bit a little bit feisty as well um, and that is not a belief of oh yeah the full moon affects people therefore I'm looking for this sort of thing and my husband is something I've noticed over the very many years we've been together so yeah I think on a full moon we're much more likely to have a disagreement um, I'm not sure if I'm any feistier maybe I should have a little watch out for that. Um, but yeah, I'd love to know how the full moon affects you guys. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. So talking of um, things affecting us, really sorry, really struggling to get my words out today. I am still feeling the effects of not being very well at the weekend, but talking of things affecting us and people not being very well, I'm really sad to see that Stuart, of Weird Raven in Glastonbury, which is a Viking shop. He is an author and a drummer and a vocalist in Roots of the Old Oak. I was very sad to see that he unexpectedly passed away in the week. Now we were just getting to know Stuart. My husband and his brother were going to be stocking some leather items in his shop. We'd met Stuart quite a few times in our travels down to Glastonbury and then obviously we'd made this connection, not met his wife yet, only spoken to her via email. But yeah, we were really, really sad to see that Stuart had passed away in the week. We are absolutely gutted. He was a really, really lovely man, very knowledgeable, very much like a larger than life character, always welcomes people into the shop and is happy to have conversation and just a lovely, lovely guy. So yeah, we are so sorry. And we're sending all our love here to Fiona and family, his wife. And yeah, it's just sad to see that someone who is so important in our community and loved by so many people, just looked up to by so many people has now taken his onward journey. So I hope he's up in Valhalla somewhere, feasting with his friends, telling great stories of some of the things that he's got up to over the years. Young guy, must only have been in his 40s. Very, very sad. So yeah, just a friend that we were, well, he wasn't quite a friend yet. We didn't know him well enough to call him that, but it was going that way and we were very much looking forward to connecting with him. We were going to pop down and see him very soon. And yeah, just absolute shock. So yeah, sending all our 
most sincere love and condolences. So I have been cheering myself up with some TV, if you want to call it that. I found a channel on YouTube that I've been absolutely loving. So this is a really clever little channel. Um, it's run by a lady who is an artist and she gives us a very good history lesson on figures of the past. So we'll pluck well, not we won't pluck one out of thin air. We'll we'll talk about one that I've actually watched. So Anne Boleyn, for example. So she does, you know, many royal figures. Um, she does all sorts of interesting historical characters, and she gives you a really good history lesson on them. And then at the end of the session, she shows some artwork that she has created, and I'm assuming she's using AI. Probably one of the few scenarios where I think AI is a good thing and she recreates their image. So she does this using uh, paintings, research, historical documents. So there are some images, for example, of some of Henry VIII's wives, where we have come to know it as particular wives, but actually the, the history and the facts are that they probably aren't portraits of them. Well, she does all this research, and at the end, she um, shows you a reconstruction. So she'll do like a traditional reconstruction and she'll do a modern one as well. And the most lovely thing of all is that she makes them smile. I've only watched a handful, so I don't know if she does this to all of them. I've only watched a few of women. I haven't seen any of the male historical figures on there yet. I've only just discovered this channel. But she makes them smile. And I watched the Anne Boleyn one first. And it was set to such beautiful music. And then when Anne Boleyn smiled, I found it really moving. It was really, really beautiful. And I really, really implore you to go and have a look. I'll put a link below. Absolutely fascinating viewing. The good thing is you can actually just listen to it while you're doing something else and then have a look at the images at the end. She does sometimes, like I said, she goes into the portraits of these people and whether they're accurate or not. So there are some stages where you might want to look, but on the whole, just a really, really fantastic channel. I'm absolutely loving it. And I love Tudor history. I love history of all kinds. And so it's really, really wonderful to see these characters being brought to life, even if it is just in the imagination of someone else. But it is, you know, she does her research and she does look at historical facts. So probably as accurate as we are going to be without actually going back in time. So yeah, really, really enjoying that. Fantastic channel and well done to the lady who um, has created that. She's an artist and obviously has a real passion for history. So yeah, absolutely fabulous. So, um, you know, thinking of ancestors and the past and things like that, I wanted to talk about DNA and DNA testing and heritage. Um, I think they call it a uh, mitochondrial DNA test. So I was given a test several years ago, <coughs> excuse me, as a gift. And it's a really, really wonderful gift because as the science improves, your results update and they manage to pinpoint sort of um, more and more closely where your DNA hails from. I, I would love to know if you've had yours done. This isn't going to be looked at as in all the sort of risks and limitations. We're all aware of those and that's not really where I want to go with this. Obviously, some of these results might not be accurate. These DNA tests say nothing about the culture that we grew up in. And also, I'm aware that sometimes people end up being psychologically scarred because they find out things about themselves or they find out about family members and stuff like that, you know, secrets of the past things like that, that can end up being very, very damaging. Um, so I'm not really going to go into that sort of side of things, because obviously if you're going to have a D DNA test done and make sure you're aware of the risks and you've thoroughly researched it before you do anything like, you know, like you would, you should research before you do absolutely anything. But I, I just wanted to talk about my results because I'm, I'm sort of pleased with them. I, I, I do wish they were more exotic. I won't lie. Obviously, there is a huge chunk of England and Northwest Europe. They put those two areas into one um, huge chunk. So I've got 83% of that. But I've also got 7% um, owing to Ireland, 
4% to Norway and 6% to Sweden and Denmark. And I'm not really surprised by the last two because if you look at my mum's family, and I don't, I know that one doesn't equal the other, but when you look at my mum's family and everyone in it, everybody's quite, I would say, sort of Scandinavian in terms of their colouring. So everybody's sort of blondish, very fair, blue eyes. And then my sister and I, obviously we get a lot of DNA from my father's side, but um, well, she's a redhead. So again, that kind of comes from my mum's side. And then I, I was dark when I was little, there's pictures of me and I've got like black hair. I'm much fairer now uh, as, a, as an adult, although obviously I'm, I'm grey. I'm uh, growing that back out, but yeah. So really, really interesting. And I think it's just lovely because it just, it makes you think about where you come from. And I think for a witch as well, it's lovely to hear that you have a certain heritage and you know, there might be certain traditions that relate to you. Now the figures I've given you, um, it says Ireland 7%, but actually that's sort of in the middle of a window. So it could be a little bit less or it could be, a little bit more so in this case I think it said that um, that could be up to 16% for me so, which is quite a lot and it's quite a jump from 7% so yeah I don't know if the science will update and whether that will um, you know become more accurate and I'll find out you know that I've got less or more that has happened I had a lot more down as the Swedish and the Denmark before which again the Den Denmark that's not really that can it's not really that surprising when you consider the history of the UK. Um, but yeah, so very, very interesting. And yeah, it makes you think about certain traditions, how you feel about certain things and how they're celebrated and stuff like that. Leading on from that, it kind of does lead into something else. Um, I just want to have a bit of a clarification on a couple of things that I posted in my stories and for one of them, certainly I, I want to apologise in case I've offended anybody, but I just want to clear things up and explain where I'm coming from. So I am historically not very political on my Instagram page. I also work um, now and so obviously I use my account carefully and I tend to use Instagram as a place that's not political, where everybody can enjoy themselves and hopefully everybody can learn something. However, there are certain things going on in the world right now and I don't feel like there's very much I can do about them. And if there's one thing that is not going to happen, that is I'm not going to stay silent about them if I think they're wrong and if I think that people you know, people, well, people's lives are at stake here. So there is a situation in the world that is happening and it is at the forefront of the news and everybody knows that it's going on. And I will never, ever not condemn acts of terrorism and violence and war, especially when, and, and I'm not saying that one person's worth more than another, I'm not, but so many of these conflicts and these situations affect women and children. And so I find myself deeply empathising with the women and children that are affected by these things, the women in particular, because, you know, you imagine them trying to deal with certain scenarios and cope with certain things. And it was just a cute little ditty about Valentine's Day. It was like a little poem Roses are red, violets are blue, that kind of thing. And it was in relation to me calling for, a, for an end of this violence. So I just wanna make it clear that because I am, I'm condemning one group of people being hurt, that, that doesn't mean that I'm condemning another group of people. That doesn't mean that I'm anti them. I am very much aware of how the world works and that we have an elite few running this planet and that governments make money out of war and terror. I, I'm not an idiot. I know it's, that's exactly how it goes. And I think to believe otherwise is a little bit naive. And so I know where to put the blame. And I think that if you voice your opinion, and it was quite unusual for me to do this via my Instagram page, usually I keep this stuff to my personal Facebook page, which is one of the reasons why I try and keep my 
personal Facebook private to only people who know me very well so that they, they totally understand where I'm coming from. So that if I don't articulate something well, they know that it still comes from a good heart. But in this case, I thought that I would I would use my voice, well, not even that, but you know, the fact that I have a large platform should not deter me from saying what I think and how I feel. And I feel absolutely lost in this world watching these awful things happen to people. And yes, I just want to say that just because I condemn that doesn't mean that I'm anti another group of people. I know exactly where the blame lies. I know exactly how the world works and I wouldn't wish any harm on that group of people either. So it, it didn't even, the post didn't even go as far as that. It just said, let's look after these people that are going through something terrible right now. It didn't say I'm anti these people. I'm not anti anybody. Um, I don't happen to know anyone from the group of people who are being hurt right now, um, but I stick up for them. And actually, I happen to know a few people from, you could say, are, you know, are an opposing country. Um, and I happen to know quite a few people and from that group and they are just as horrified as I am. And they totally understand that my condemnation of a particular situation does not mean that I am anti them. You know, they know me well enough. Um, I should know better, you know, I know that if you share your opinion that someone is gonna come at you. And I'm not saying that this was uh, an argumentative situation, it wasn't at all, but um, I don't need people to let me know that, you know, they're a bit surprised or, you know, perhaps they're a bit disappointed because on this one particular thing, I, I'm not sorry. I will stand up for what is right and I will occasionally voice my opinion and I'm totally prepared to take on whatever comes as a result of that. I'm a, I'm a grown up and I'm a witch and I believe in understanding when something wrong is happening and adding your voice to the other voices. I think that's really, really important. So I'm not on this particular thing going to offer an apology. If anyone was offended by that, then, you know, well, I am sorry, I don't want anyone to be offended, but that was my opportunity to voice my opinion on that. So there was something else as well that I shared that I think might have upset or offended um, people and I'm really sorry. I am really sorry if that's the case. I shared a post about someone saying that they were going to go to a sacred well um, or spring and take down the clutes from the trees. So if you don't know what clutes are, they are um, strips of ribbon or material that people tie to a tree, usually by sacred well or spring in the hope that their illness will be cured, that they will be healed. I want, and I, and I said that this was good work. So let me give you my view on that. My own personal sort of position on this is that the fabrics that we tie to trees are damaging them, they're strangling them, they're not doing them any good. I'm not against the tradition. I think the tradition is beautiful and it comes from a time when we use natural fiber, fibers that biodegraded. Therefore, they weren't as harmful. They weren't as harmful to the tree. They would break down and they would disintegrate as the tree grew. And that kind of ties in with, with you know, the wish, with the intention behind tying these little strips of cloth to that particular tree. Of course, as somebody who suffers with chronic illness, the last thing I want is to take away the hope from others. Um, the last thing I want is to take away the magic of others and to take away people's dreams of being better. I, would, as someone with chronic illness, understands that desire to be better more than anyone, more than anyone and more than especially right now, you know, where I'm really, really struggling myself. I totally, totally understand that. And my personal um, sort of position on this is while I admire people who go out and do th and try and stop things um, that they think is wrong, I personally wouldn't turn up at a spring myself and cut them all down. I, I couldn't bring myself to do that, even if I feel that tying a nylon ribbon is wrong onto a tree. But there are people who are willing to go do that. And 
I, I think perhaps we need to be very careful here. We obviously need to think about people's traditions and their wishes and the fact they've tied them up there. Um, I think maybe we need to just try and spread the message more that, you know, um, there are some fabrics that just aren't very um, environmentally friendly. And that is generally always the sort of stance that I've come from. Um, I'm still not sorry that I shared the post because I think it brings awareness to this, you know, uh, with witchcraft and paganism and traditions and stuff like that you know they all evolve with the time we probably need to evolve with the time and the fact that we no longer have purely natural fibers and we have some synthetic ones shows that things change over time but perhaps it was foolish of me to post that up and be encouraging of people that are going to go and then just take everyone's wishes down I, i'm in two minds i really really honestly am Obviously, I think that the tradition is beautiful. I think the tradition is beautiful. Um, it's, I think it's an old Irish tradition and certainly it happens in Scotland. Um, it happens in England as well. I, I don't know the exact history and um, I suspect in England we've probably taken on that last. Um, there's in no way do I wanna get rid of old traditions. If anything, I want to keep them going. But I think we need to become more mindful about what we do when we're outside and we certainly need to think of the earth. And I understand anyone's desire to get well. I'm, for, even for me, who really, really needs to get well, that desire for me doesn't overtake thoughts of the environment. So I personally wouldn't tie um you know some synthetic material into a tree. And as pretty as it looks, and it does look pretty, it does. Um, I would think twice about that. Natural fibres, loosely, you know, that's totally different. So yeah, my apologies for that if I offended anybody. I, you know, I would never want to offend anybody, no matter the topic. Um, there are some times I need to speak out about things, and I need to stand by that. And there are other times where I, you know, I, I speak up about things, but perhaps I don't quite go into the full the fullness of where I stand on them. And actually sometimes, you know, it's okay to review something and go, yeah, maybe I should take a slightly different stance on that. Or maybe there's elements of this that, you know, I fully support, but actually there are elements that I don't. So yeah, my apologies. It's always good to apologize when you're in the wrong or, you know, when you're in a situation that's very, very complex and, you know, some harm could result from your opinion. So, yeah, apologies for that. So what next? Um, yeah, one other thing that I wanted to share with you that um, I didn't actually, when I was speaking about what I've been watching this week and last week, because obviously I missed the week, um, I didn't realise that this film was from 2016. I thought it was, uh, I mean, that's not that long ago, so, you know, it doesn't look dated. But I thought, I thought it was like a film from last year or something. But anyway, I, I digress. Hidden Figures. If you've not seen this film, Hidden Figures, please check it out. It was absolutely fantastic. It's based on true life events. It is about the experiences of a group of African-American women working for NASA in 1961, in the yeah, late 50s, early 60s, in particular, um, the the mission to get John Glenn into orbit in 1961. So these ladies were the brains behind this. They were the mathematicians, the scientists, the amazing, amazing brains who were really the superpower uh, behind getting this mission done and dusted and getting him into the air. So absolutely brilliant. It was about three women in particular. So I'm gonna say their names, Catherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughan, and Mary Jackson. And basically it's just about struggle. It's about obviously gender struggles and racial struggles. And it was absolutely brilliant. And I loved it. I love films like this that are just a little bit more than, you know, some action film with some smouldering bloke in. Obviously, I'm not happy that these women encountered these experiences and they were so incredibly brave to keep working under those conditions. I mean, you know yourself, if you're at work 
and there's any kind of like opposition from someone who's making your life difficult it's really really stressful and they were facing it on two fronts the fact that they were people of color and the fact that they were women so there was there's a lot going on there there's a lot to unpack and it was just it's just the most brilliant film and as a woman yeah i thought it was really really moving so i really enjoyed that i really recommend that i think it's really um it's quite illuminating to see what these poor women had to put up with in the course of them just trying to you know be at work complete their work support their families and it's, it's interesting that they you know they were hired off of the back of their brilliant brains but at the same time they had to deal with things like segregated toilets and using a different kettle and stuff like that absolutely mind-boggling because the 60s weren't that long ago in the whole scheme of things so obviously we've come on in some ways from there but in many ways we haven't but yeah absolutely fantastic film if you haven't watched it it's on uh, i think we've watched it on netflix yeah we watched it on netflix absolutely brilliant hidden figures can't recommend that enough um yeah so i'm gonna do some cards now now that i've witted on for long enough um ha tell me how your week has been what you've been up to um I'll, I'll be honest i am finding having a job really really exhausting obviously i'm doing this at a time when i probably shouldn't well i shouldn't be working at all you know i've struggled for the past six seven eight years and now there's you know there's an even more serious problem that is um ultimately you know life threatening and will reduce my life um i haven't got my complete diagnosis yet but my little gadget is is pretty much told me what's going on but yeah so i'm absolutely bonkers and obviously i need to be a bit more careful bearing in mind what happened at the weekend but yeah tell me tell me how your week is going mine is busy <laughs> mine is busy tell me what you've been up to i love to hear Mm. I always make my tea and then I do these sessions and then I never drink it. Okay, so we've got four cards today. It's an interesting range of cards. We've got the Ace of Swords, we've got the Knight of Swords, we've got the King of Wands and we've got the Page of Cups. So yeah, I feel like um, rather than this being about an event itself and the nature of that event, this is very much sort of like looking at the qualities and characteristics that you will need to, or behaviours that you're going to need to have and take on to navigate through the rest of this week. So um, it feels like it's very much going to be the beginning of something for a lot of you, a fresh start, sort of those new new projects new beginnings starting something new that kind of energy um, and alongside that uh, it's going to be a mental project most likely something that you need to um, use your brain for and your cognitive powers and using your head and the message is very much about not rushing in so don't go in all guns blazing um, you might be enthusiastic, you might be keen, but just go in sensibly, use your head and just look where you leap a little bit. Just don't go in too hastily, be a bit calmer and a bit measured in your response. You're going to need to fall upon your leadership skills and qualities. That is very much going to be the energy. So being measured, standing your ground, knowing that you're doing the right thing and just taking it very, very methodically, thinking things through, not making decisions hastily, not rushing, not sort of running before you can walk, just one step at a time, very much planning this. You know, if you if something new comes up and you're not surprising, you're not expecting it, then yeah, just take a moment, take a moment to plan it, take a moment to think it through, 
draw up the pros and cons, draw out a plan, you know, brainstorm it, very much going from that mental angle and know that you are the right person to take this on and that you're going to be the person with the answers and you're going to be the person that's going to need to lead the way on this. So it could be, it could be something, you know, related to someone else that you're related to, or it could be yours, in which case, obviously, you're going to be the person to handle this. But yeah, that is the advice. And also, I love the page of cups, expect the unexpected. I definitely think there's been a lot of that energy about this this year, expect the unexpected. Um, I picked a word for the year, which was success, uh, interestingly. Um, but yeah, I think alongside that, I should also say expect the unexpected. Uh, that's, yeah, it's very much how it's been here. So yeah, so there we go. Little reading for the week. Um, I'm really sorry that I've struggled to engage the head with the mouth today but um i am extremely tired so and i am struggling a little there's there's no doubt about that but i'm wishing you the best best week have a lovely lovely week and yeah i'm wishing you lots of love and um, i have every intention of being here every friday sometimes obviously when life takes over because we have it on a friday Sometimes I literally run out of week and I know it's not ideal. And I know when you're all sat and you're ready and you're waiting for an episode. And I really, really appreciate you guys for being here. Um, I appreciate that's like a real pain in the bottom. But I do massively intend to get here every Friday. And even though I've taken on a job, um, you know, I kind of have to take on a job to be able to afford to be here with you guys so I do intend to do it but obviously sometimes at the minute occasionally I'm just too poorly or you know I've run out of steam or I just sometimes run out of week um yeah it's busy isn't it life um you know having a house a husband kids jobs all that kind of stuff there's always something going on isn't there so and i know it's the same for you guys as well so yeah i won't stress about it you guys are brilliant you're so supportive thank you so much from the bottom of my heart so yeah have a fabulous witching week have a lovely weekend and i'll catch you next friday all right lots of love bye